Xbox 360 emulation is currently spotty at best when you compare it to things like the PS3 emulator or PCS3. But what if there was another way that we could play classic Xbox 360 titles on PC? Well the landscape here is getting pretty exciting because not only has a game been ported to PC by fans, but the team behind it have released the tool that they used, letting devs decompile any Xbox 360 game to C++ code using only the executable, no source code required. This is the Xbox 360 version of Sonic Unleashed running completely natively on PC. And by natively, I seriously mean no emulation, janky workarounds or setups, just double click the .exe and you're playing the game. Let me illustrate how incredible this is and also answer some questions that you may be having. Like how is this even possible? Is this going to open the floodgates to more Xbox 360 games coming to PC? And what does it mean for the future of game preservation in general? So let's go over what we know so far. Now this is a recompile of the game or a reverse engineer of it. This isn't anything new to PC gaming as there have been games that have been recompiled before. One of the most popular projects in recent years was the old Nintendo 64 Zelda titles. And the team behind this Sonic Unleashed recompile say that this project directly inspired them. This whole recompiling is pretty new to Xbox 360 games though and it shows promise of being able to be done for practically all of them. And the reason that's the case is because alongside making this port, they also developed the tools that they used and released them publicly, so anyone, anywhere, can recompile any Xbox 360 game with, like I said, just the executable. Getting a game like this to run natively is super important because we can get things like 4K resolution, ultra-wide support, and the possibility of going all the way up to 120fps. We can obviously do some of these on emulators, but it's so incredibly easy to do on a PC port instead. There's also no emulator overhead, meaning it's got better performance and in theory, fewer bugs. For this specific port, the install and setup is so straightforward. This isn't a tutorial, but basically what you do is you get the files from GitHub and run the exe. The installer will pretty much walk you through everything in order to get it working. In about five minutes, I had this game up and running and honestly, it just worked. I didn't encounter any bugs, but there are still a few that are mentioned on the GitHub, and also uncapping FPS is a problem at the moment because it breaks certain parts of the game. It's still locked at 60 though, whereas the Xbox version was running at 30 FPS, I believe. Again, this is an Xbox 360 game running natively on PC. Those are minor things when you realise how incredible this all is. Also, besides gameplay, the settings menu is incredibly detailed. Whoever was responsible in the team for making these settings did an amazing job. Of course, the original game didn't have these PC settings, so this was all made by the team, and they seriously went above and beyond here. There are an extensive amount of options here like the anti-aliasing methods, vsync toggle and FPS limiter, but there's also extra bits that they really didn't need to add, like giving the ability to change certain aspects of the port, like removing the warm tint that the Xbox 360 version had, and enhancing or removing the motion blur. All of the graphical option settings as well have images that let you see exactly what they're changing. Now for the actual gameplay of the port, in my experience with everything pretty much at default, meaning 1440p with a cap of 60fps, the experience was amazing. It felt extremely snappy and smooth with 1% lows that never went below the 50 mark. As you can see as well, the frame times are really really smooth as well. Overall, the experience is a major improvement over running it inside the Xenia emulator. Here is that side by side for a little comparison, and you can see how much more fidelity and clarity we get with this recompile. Not to mention, in my experience actually playing the game in Xenia, I was getting dips to 20fps and also the game by default is locked at 30. I used the optimized settings that the Xenia manager recommended to me, alongside upping the render scale. Now stepping away from this specific port, in a whole, the biggest advantage of doing this to games is obviously preservation. The more old a game gets, the more it becomes less available to everyone, and then also the consoles that it was made for start to die out. There will literally be a time where these retro games are completely impossible to get hold of, and so making sure that we have other ways to play these titles other than on original hardware is perfect. This of course is not an easy process, and there are current limitations that we should talk about. This kind of thing took a lot of hours, like a tremendous amount of team effort, so this is not exactly the kind of breakthrough where all of a sudden, every 360 game is going to have a PC port. 
But what it does mean is that because the team behind this proved that it can be done and released the tools for it, this knowledge can extend to new teams out there and it can only mean that we're going to get more similar projects for different 360 games. There are a decent amount of games that are stranded on the system, like recently we covered Web of Shadows, which looked the best on the 360 version, but since the Xenia emulator isn't quite there yet, and may never be there, having a decompile of it would be amazing. Web of Shadows of course has a PC port, but the same can't be said for Edge of Time, so that would be a case where we can finally get to play it on PC. Now there is an implication here, because these decompiles could strike a nerve of publishers. This is after all a legal grey area, and we've also seen it firsthand with companies like Take-Two taking down the GTA 3 and Vice City reverse engineer projects. This of course scares a lot of future devs off from spending the time and money that they could invest into these, ultimately to be killed overnight due to the publisher not wanting it to exist. If the tools improve though, they could make it become so easy to recompile, and therefore games like Halo 3, Gears of War and Fable 2 could see ports. And of course, these games are all fan favourite Xbox 360 titles, which brings me to my next point. The likelihood of us getting decompiled projects really depend on modders and fan interest. Like there are a few projects trying to get Halo 3 to PC, but we technically already have it through Halo Master Chief Collection, so the need from it from fans isn't as strong as other games. Something actually stuck on the console though, like the Forza games, I think Crackdown is stuck on there as well, these are way more likely to get projects. It also got me thinking that this might attract the attention of Microsoft, hopefully in a good way. Do I think someone as big as Microsoft could potentially support official ports like this? I don't think so due to the shaky legality of it. But they do have a pretty decent track record of preserving older games, like making the Xbox consoles one of the better ones for backwards compatibility. Regardless of what's going to happen next, I truly believe that this might become the future of game preservation. Only time will tell of course, but the tools can only get better from here. We might be looking at a solution to the Xbox 360's forgotten library, and potentially other consoles from different generations. So because this proves to us that the native ports are possible, what games do you want to see ported? Are there any Xbox 360 games that you would love to see? Let me know in the comments. If this happened last year, I probably would have said Red Dead 1, but of course we have the official port now. As a Spider-Man fan that's never played Edge of Time because it's stuck on consoles though, that would be a really nice one to have. Big thanks to all the supporters on Patreon and here on YouTube. You guys allow me to do what I do here on the channel, which is explore older titles in an attempt to renew and enhance them. You can support too from just £1 a month by following the link in the description to my Patreon, or hitting the join button below this video. Also, we are running another giveaway with Instant Gaming, which will give you the chance to win a game of your choice. The winner is chosen every month, so follow the link in the description and get signed up for that. Big thanks to Instant Gaming for sponsoring this channel. If you want a really easy way to support the channel, my Instant Gaming referral link is in the description. If you head over there and buy any game on the platform, you're not only supporting me, but getting great deals on games both old and new. Now if preserving and enhancing games on PC is your thing, then maybe you should get subscribed, as that's exactly what this channel is about. And if you want to watch more content like this, then I think you'll like this video that's on screen now. See you over there.